Today we will listen to a detailed audio description of Elizabeth Catlett's bronze portrait of poet Phyllis Wheatley. This object is hung in Gallery 125, a special exhibitions gallery. This gallery is currently housing our Women Breaking Boundaries exhibition. This exhibition is designed to celebrate female identifying art makers from across the museum's varied collections and how these women have changed the norm and excelled in their fields. The Women Breaking Boundaries exhibition goes beyond this gallery space by adding WBB stickers to labels throughout the museum, which identify art on display that represents or are made by powerful women. The sculpture in front of us was made by Elizabeth Catlett, who was an American sculptor born in 1915 and who died in 2012. It is called Phyllis Wheatley and was finished in 1973 using bronze. It was purchased by the museum in 1999. The sculpture is 19.5 inches tall, 12 inches wide, and 14 inches deep. The sculpture of Phyllis Wheatley is a bust of her ribs to her head, including her arms. She is looking directly ahead and is situated around eye level so that we can look directly into her eyes. Wheatley is posed as if resting her chin on her left hand with her pointer finger touching her cheek as if deep in thought. Her thumb is under her chin. Her right arm is supporting her left by going across her body and holding her elbow. The dimensions of this piece feel very lifelike, though a bit smaller than reality. The whole sculpture is bronze colored. Some textures have dark marks, such as her dress and her head wrap. Her facial features are lifelike, but a bit more extracted. Looking at Phyllis Wheatley's face, there is a ridge where eyebrows would be, and the pupils of her eyes have been carved out. These stylized techniques reference the markings of certain African cultures' masks. Wheatley is wearing a simple shirt with a wide neck collar and sleeves that end past her elbows. The shirt has a small, uneven textural detailing. This detail contrasts with her skin, which is very smooth. From the neck down, the sculpture's details feel quite lifelike, showing the veins in her neck and through her arms. Covering Wheatley's hair is a scarf. It has a ridge border that almost looks like the fork marks at the edge of a pie. Most of her hair is covered, except for a few pieces near her ears and at the top of her head. The subject of Elizabeth Castlet's bust is an 18th century poet, Phyllis Wheatley, who was sold into slavery as a young child from Western Africa. She was educated while enslaved and published a volume of her poems by the age of 20 and eventually gained her freedom. Empowerment is a central theme of Catlett's work as she drew inspiration from the black power and feminist movements of the 1960s and 70s. The pose that Catlett shows Wheatley in is a direct reference to the most famous image of the poet, in which she strikes the same pose. Listen to a poem by Phyllis Wheatley called On Virtue to get a better insight into the subject's own creativity. O oh, thou bright jewel, in my aim I strive to comprehend thee, thine own words declare. Wisdom is higher than a fool can reach. I cease to wonder and no more attempt. Thine height to explore or fathom thy profound. But O oh, my soul, sink not into despair. Virtue is near thee and with gentle hand. Would now embrace thee, hovers over thine head. Fain would then heaven-born soul with her converse, then seek, then court her for her promised bliss. Auspicious queen, thine heavenly opinion spread, and lead celestial chastity along. Lo, now her sacred retinue descends, arrayed in glory from the orbs above, 
Attend me, virtue, through my youthful years, but lead me not to the false joys of time, but guide my steps to endless life and bliss. Greatness or goodness, say what I shall call thee, to give me a higher appellation still. Teach me a better strain, a nobler lay, O thou enthroned with cherubs in the realms of day.